So in this section, we will be turning on the instrument and using the S1 PXRF software to control the instrument. As a quick review, I'd like to remind the audience that there are three ways to activate the X-ray tube. The first way is on the handle. The second way is the remote trigger. And the third way is the software-based software PC trigger, which we will talk more about in this session. So the instrument is ready keyed in and turned on. For this session, we will be using the stainless steel coupon. And as a reminder, the direction of the beam is going this way. So we will want to point the unit away from the user. When we activate the X-ray tube, this red light should turn on. Before we begin, we need to make the communication connection between the instrument and the computer. To do this, we need to know the COM port number that the USB is plugged into. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to go to the Start menu and click on the All Programs. Go to the Brooker AXS HH Programs folder. Click on the View COM Ports icon, and that will tell you your COM port number. Now, if you don't see the View COM Ports icon, then go back to the Start menu. In the Search window, type in Device Manager. Hit Continue. And then go to the Ports. And then that will tell you the COM port number. In our case, it's COM number three. Close the window. And now we are ready to start the S1 PXRF software. Double click on the shortcut. Now, if you go to tube and KTI tube, you will notice that the read is grayed out. It's not activated. Also notice that we have a red button. So the software is not ready yet. So we first need to go down to the download, go to the port, click on this, and enter your COM port number. For us, it's number three. Hit enter. When that is inputted, notice that the red button turns green, and now we have a start button. Go back to download and to the rate, and make sure that the highest rate is checked. Next, go to the setup, instrument setup. The number of channels should be at 2048, and the S1 mode should be checked. The backscatter should be unchecked. In a previous session, we had talked about the three different ways to activate the X-ray tube. The first way is to activate it on the handle of the instrument. The second way is the remote controller. And the third way is the computer-assisted activation, and that is the PC trigger. Now, we can activate the PC trigger in two locations in the software. And one of the location is in the instrument setup window, which is here. When you activate the PC trigger in this window, you will notice that the KTI tube is activated, is black. When you click on this, the instrument X-ray tube will be activated. What this means is that you need to have your instrument be positioned in an orientation that is safe for the user and everyone in the surrounding area. The second location that the PC trigger can be activated or deactivated is also in this window, it's over here. This window also shows you the different voltage and current pairings that we've set up in the X-ray ops. And this setup of the pairings is discussed in another session that's focused on X-ray ops, so we will not discuss it here. What we can do in this window is choose which voltage and current that we would like to use. 
So we are going to use the 40 kV 1.5. Notice that the voltage and the current now reaches the target voltage and current that is set by our choice. Once that has stabilized, we can unclick the PC trigger and hit OK. This means that your x-ray tube is stabilized and ready to go. In the next section, we are going to do timed assays. We go to timed and click on time assay. We can choose the acquisition time that we would like. For this demonstration, I will put 15 seconds. We have the three different file types. The PDZ file type is the proprietary S1P XRF file type. The text and the CSV file types can be open with Grams, Excel, or the RTEC software. We've also clicked on autosave. And what this means is that you will input your file name for your spectrum in this window. And then when you have acquired your spectrum, it will automatically save to the folder and the file name that you've designated. If you stop the acquisition before the timed assay is completed because your time is too long, for example, you will need to manually save that file because it will not be automatically saved. Here I will just write test. And then you just activate your x-ray tube either by the PC trigger by the handle or by the remote controller. Notice that the time counts down from our acquisition time, 15 seconds to zero, and when it's completed, it will turn black. The next step is to label your peaks. Go to your ID. And here you will have several options. If you click on elements, you will get the periodic table. And you can choose between the K lines, L lines, or M lines. And you can pick and go across the periodic table. If you are interested in that peak, you can add and it will be labeled on your spectrum. You can also go to Z plus and Z minus, and that will continue going up and down the periodic table. This tells you also where you are at in the periodic table when you are moving across to the different peaks. So once you're satisfied with your peak identification, you can also save that file. Now there are several ways to compare peaks. The S1 PXRF software, we can overlay at a maximum two spectra. So in this dropdown, you will notice that we have A, B, A over B, and B over A. So, spectra 1 is A and spectra 2 is B. To overlay, you need to go to Setup, Spectrum Overlay, and then Clear B. Hit OK. Now you go to A, File, Open, and open your file of interest. Now go to the drop down and click on B and open your file of interest for B. If you go to A over B, 
or b over a, the only difference is that you choosing which spectrum to be active. And the active spectrum is the first one, the one on the left side. And that will always be red. The second spectrum, the one on the right side, is always green. So if we do A over B, A is the active spectrum, and it will be red. And B is green. Now, if you want to compare many files, you can go to PDC Preview. And that will open all the files that are in the most current folder. And what you can do is just go down each of these files. And again, it is the red spectrum that is active, so it will change and the green spectrum will stay and be compared. If you want to compare spectra that are not in the same folder of the current folder, then go to Path and choose the appropriate folder. Once you're done with that, you can hit OK. Another way to compare two spectra is to normalize them. To do that, we go to Setup, go to Spectrum Overlay. You will notice that we have a Normalize button here. Now, to normalize, we have to choose the peak that we want to normalize to. So for example, here, I'd like to normalize it to the Iron Peak, for example, the Iron K Alpha Peak. You need to click on that peak, and then hit normalize. And then that will normalize it to your iron peak. Once you're done, you can hit OK or no normalize, and we'll go back to the original view. Now, to compress or to expand your scale, you go to the left side or the bottom depending on the y-axis or the x-axis. And then you click on the left-hand button of the mouse and then scroll up or scroll down to expand or compress, respectively. And same thing with the x-axis. Click on the left-hand mouse button and then scroll outwards or left or right to compress and expand.